morning folks. Um, join me today as I head to FabFest in Birmingham. Um, it's a data community event, talking all things fabric, everything else. And hopefully in today's video, you can get a, a flavour as to what that community um, looks like when it, when it comes to the Microsoft data platform. So stick along. Any questions you have af after the session, by all means put them into the comments. Um, but yeah, let's go on the journey. <music> Really quick update on FabFest so far. So some really interesting topics have been discussed. We, we've gone through Microsoft Fabric, but from a slightly different perspective, looking at how it compares to things like Snowflake, Databricks, how Microsoft aren't investing as much into science anymore. So there's a really big push to moving over to Fabric. I think one of the nice things is that it, it really brought to light a lot of the some of the feature gaps that you might have seen previously. I know a lot of the customers I work with, you know, they, they might look at using Snowflake as, as an example. And, and actually with Fabric, you've got a whole load of capability now. There are still some functionality gaps, and from the looks of things, Microsoft are going to be releasing a whole load of updates over in, in, into Q4 this year to kind of address a load of those. And again, there's new updates all the time. But I think the key thing is is that Fabric's definitely here to stay. It's definitely an investment area for for Microsoft, and you know businesses really no longer have an excuse not to use it. You know, one really good example being. Uh, Power BI Premium, if, if you look at that capacity, actually you can convert that directly over to an F64 uh, fabric capacity, which not only gives you all the premium capabilities with, with Power BI, but you then get all the capabilities of fabric and being able to do data warehousing. So actually that licensing conversation becomes a load easier. And when you start looking at the, the skill gap side of things, you have um, on the Power BI side, you've got a number of individuals who are familiar with Power Query, that's all fully convert, transferable over to Fabric. Um, and then when you start looking at the data science side of things, obviously you can still make use of Spark and there's capabilities there. One, one of the really nice elements I saw was around um, mirroring. So mirroring uh, data sources into Fabric, uh, making use of the, the Parquet capabilities. So again, that's, that's compressing your, your data sets, making them really easy to, to query. And in fact, You've got things like direct lake capability as well, which means that when it comes to near real time analytics, you know it, it's, it's really easy to go through and configure. And I know with a lot of healthcare um, customers, you know th they're looking to do that to help out with the patient care journey and, and so on. And having that data in near real time is is, is gold dust, really. Um, so yeah, re re really cool. What one of the other nice key takeaways is that the the, the, the fabric platform, you know, obviously it's been developed for a few years now especially with the Power BI backend, there's a big focus around how, you know, Microsoft has spent a lot of time f figuring out what that infrastructure is going to look like, maybe less so visualization in Power BI. Things have changed. So now you can see that the Power BI is competing really well with things like Tableau and, and Click and so on. But also all of that is translated into that Fabric platform. Um, and, and, and because of that, you now have, you know, when, when you're making those decisions around what data platform technology you're going to go for, Fabric's that option, which is you know definitely going to last you for at least the next five years. Which, when you look at some of the competitive products, that's not necessarily the case, and, and, and also there's a massive expense associated with that. So, yeah, stay tuned, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be a, a load more to come. <laughs>
we touch around some of the clustering algorithms in there a bit more terminology which again is, is relatively new to me but i think from a, from a data science perspective it's 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 really interesting to see how how fabric can be expanded to, to really cater for, for any need um also had a really great conversation with one of the uh, data uh, and, and AI MVPs, uh, Alex Whittles, and, and talking about his journey and, and how he's gone through and achieved that and, and so on. And talking about a lot around community engagement, um, work, working through the forums, help, helping people out with a with number of queries and questions. Um, so yeah, all, all in all, been, been a really good event. Um, I think to one other bit before I sort of sign off before the next update, had a great chat with a... Um, an organisation around Power BI governance uh, and actually understanding you know, what governance solutions are available um, for, for the Power, Power BI platform specifically, but also how that then includes some of the fabric capabilities. Um, again, really insightful, um, cool, cool features, which I think a lot of businesses would, would definitely find value in. So that's all for now. Uh, until the next update. <music>